welcome. And I'll just go on the gong. And start by lifting and rolling your shoulders. That elevates the energetic pathways up to the head. Something you can do for your feet when you're standing is to lift a toe, lift a heel, and just almost move your foot. You can feel that getting into the ankle joint and you can move it forwards and backwards and side to side. And when you're standing with very little opportunity to sit down, this can be quite a useful um, movement that you, you can circle your ankle even. And then come to the other side and again, lift your heel and just gently move from side to side and forwards and back and circle. So when I said you're standing in a queue for a long time or you really haven't got the opportunity to sit down, you can work your ankle while you're standing. And while I'm on the subject, when you've got a bad back, when you stand for too long, uh, another thing that you can do while you're standing is just simply to bend your knees and just go backwards so that you've got that kind of relief from your lower back. That's a little bit more um, obvious when you're in a queue. Um, hello, Patsy. I haven't started. We're just talking about knees and um, ankles. So I was just doing a couple of things for that. So we'll start again. Um, and I'm going to mute myself. Christine, I'm going to mute myself. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Then that's yeah. fine. And then just... Starting again, lifting and rolling the shoulders, bringing the hands up, hold your thumbs and just gently go from side up to the centre to side, up to the centre, side as you breathe out, inhale to the centre and breathe out as you go to the side. Come back to the centre and lower your arms. Lift and roll your shoulders. And using your nose like the point of a pencil, trace a horizontal figure of eight. Breathing in as you go and circle upwards, breathing out as you circle downwards. Breathing in as you cross over and coming up and breathing out as you circle down. So it doesn't matter which direction you go in because we are going to reverse this, or there's going to be an invitation to reverse this. And you move your head through your horizontal eight as little or as much as you would like. And then the invitation is to reverse your Eight, and just notice how the brain has to adapt to make that movement. We naturally favour one side or the other. You sometimes hear little noises as your neck moves. That's fine, obviously, as long as there's no um, physical aspect there. And you're inviting the left and the right brain hemispheres to um, communicate with one another. And then come to the centre. And then breathing in, reaching your hands up, stretching your fingers out, pressing your toes down, holding the breath, and then breathing out, lower your arms. And we're going to repeat this a number of times, breathing in. This is an extension. Press your feet down, raise your arms up, feel the stretch in your body, and then breathing out, lower your arms back down. As we repeat this again, just feel the stretch under your arms. That's the lymph and the energetic pathways being stretched. Press your feet down, breathing out, lower your arms. And again, we're 
raising our arms up as you stretch your thumbs behind towards you and your little fingers away you're really reaching into your extremities pressing the feet down and again breathing in looking either ahead or looking up if your neck will support an upward movement and breathing out lower your hands back down alongside you and then step forward slightly with your left foot if you find that your balance is wobbling then you've got the option always of bringing your left foot out towards the edge of the mat and the back right foot just turns out slightly at an angle of 45 degrees and when you come forward you come forward as little or as much as you would like so breathing in raising your arms up and feel the weight press onto the back of your right foot the outer edge of your back foot there's a great tendency to just come inwards but just try and put the weight onto the back of your right foot and breathing out soften or bend your front left knee as you come forward your hands can touch the ground but if that's uncomfortable for you then just come to touch whatever is appropriate pressing your front left foot down to support you as you lift up breathing in stretching up stretch those fingers again breathing out bend your elbows as you soften your front left knee feel that you're extending along your back and then come forward press your foot down as you come up it's very easy to round as you come down so as you bend your front left knee and bend your elbows have a sense your chin is tucked in slightly and lengthening along your spine at about here and then come to relax forward pressing your front foot down keeping the weight also on the back come up stretching your fingers up just really feel balanced on your left and your right foot here breathing out softening your front foot coming down have a sense of lengthening along your spine and then coming forward and coming up again and last time softening forward and coming up lower your arms step your left foot back lift and roll your shoulders and now step forward with your right foot make any adjustments that you need to turning your back left foot out and again just securing your balance we were talking about ankles so one way that you can balance and secure your ankle is to spread your toes your big toe and then your little toe and the other toes will then between those two extremes will just come down to the ground and balance you properly keeping your focus on the back left heel but you're not going to put all the weight on your front leg breathing in raising your arms up stretch your fingers you can look ahead or you can look up depending on your neck capacity and breathing out soften bending your front right knee to come forward lengthen along your spine and then come forward if you don't want to come as far as around then just come to hold your hands on the shins pressing down as you then raising your arms up again you'll notice that we're coordinating the breath with the movement so this is automatically calming your nervous system down and both the first movement and then this movement as we carry on making this movement when you calm your nervous system down you open your creative mind so it is a, a creative rejuvenator pressing your foot down as you come up you can always go into a back bend breathing out coming down so 
I don't think any of us are there, but this is um, a variation on a yoga pose called Virabhadrasana 1. And the Virabhadrasanas are, or warrior poses, are strengthening in that they're weight bearing. And as such, they are excellent for osteoporosis. But also, as you lift from your chest, that's excellent for enhancing mood, so very anti, not depression, but especially as we're coming into the um, autumn and less light, that's quite good for that. This is the last one, raising your arms up and breathing out, lower your arms back down alongside you and step your right foot back to your left. Just sway from side to side. Again, a very easy movement. So again, you'll notice that you can lift your um, heels. And again, you'll notice it in doing this, as you go from side to side, it's quite helpful for your ankles and circulation around your ankles. It also helps your foot circulation and many, and, and your back as your whole body. But if we were to have an ankle focus, then that would be quite helpful. And then gently lift and roll your shoulders. And come to sitting on the mat. So in this series, they would invite you to kneel up first and then come to uh, um, sitting. But you could, anybody with knee issues can avoid that and just come straight to sitting. And we're going to just start for a moment with our feet out in front of us. Lift the flesh out from under your bottom and just lightly place your hands on the ground. In this gentle therapy session, you can um, choose to move away from the very strict Dandasana hands down, fingers forward, and just be comfortable. Again, we're focusing on the ankles and the feet, so just lift your toes up to the ceiling and point your toes away from you. Again, lift your toes to the ceiling and point them away from you. And again, lift the toes to the ceiling and point the toes away from you. So you're feeling here, as you stretch your toes away from you, this activates the back of the um, foot, which is part of your lymph system and reflexology. And then begin to circle your ankles in one direction. And then circle your ankles in the other direction. And then finally, just stretch your toes out. Feel that you're pushing your big toe almost into the sand. That it's squishy. It just the, the sand is supporting your weight. You might just move from side to side as you focus on one foot and then the other. And then just relax your toes. Spread your feet further apart into a V. And then, um, this is optional, you can bend up, I'm going to bend up my right uh, leg, but if you've got a dodgy knee, then you can keep your feet out. Don't feel that you have to do that. Extend the left foot, left toes upwards. Turn towards your extended, in my case, left leg. Raise your arms up. And as you breathe out, just bring your tummy or lower abdomen in towards your spine. You can bend your elbows to soften the movement on your back and just come forward, bringing your hands to rest on your shin. And just take an in and an out breath here. You'll feel the stretch on the outer, in my case, right thigh, the thigh of the, right, of the bent leg. So it's a hip opener. It's a slight rotation as you come over your front left leg and as a forward bend, it's calming for the nervous system. Your chin slightly tucks in towards your chest so that the back of the neck is long. And just take a couple of breaths here.
again, from a point of view of creativity, coming forward um, is calming to the nervous system, but that automatically rejuvenates our, it creates room in our brain pathways for um, new thoughts to come in as we clear off the, the old debris, it's calming for our nervous system. Slide your hands up your um, outstretched leg, in my case my left leg. Lift your hands up, lower your hands, and then just take your hands to support underneath the uh, five bent leg, my right leg, and stretch your leg out. Just bounce your knees, bounce your legs. This sets up a vibration. So from the point of view of circulation, and if you were concerned about your ankles, this very simple movement is activating the circulation in your legs. So again, it's activating flow, which is what you're looking for. And then very gently bend up your other leg. If that's not good for your leg, then you can um, stay with both legs um, flat along the ground. You can always have support under your bent uh, thigh, under my left thigh, and extend the right foot. Just lengthening the body, turn towards the outstretched leg and raising the arms up. Tummy or lower abdomen in. You can engage your perineum, this protects your core. If you were being purist, you would come straight over, but that's quite harsh on your back. So the invitation is to bend your elbows and slide your hands down your shin. So wherever that's appropriate, you might be midway in your shin, you might be almost down to your foot, you could hold your foot, but it's your choice. And just come forward as you're breathing in and out. Noticing the opening now on the other hip, the inner groin, but even the outer hip is slightly stretched. This as you're coming forward, there's a long muscle, if I can remember the name, it's called quadratus lumborum, and it links from the hip going up to um, attaching to the ribs. And this muscle in this forward bend is being stretched, but this muscle is very much implicated in lower back problems, so this is giving it a very nice stretch. And then sliding your hands up, raising your arms up, lowering your arms and just lifting that bent left or bent knee uh, to straighten out. And then once more, just bounce your knees. Soles of the feet together, just for a moment, for a couple of breaths. Holding at the ankles will be very gentle here and feel the opening in the inner groin. So breathing in and breathing out. And you can bounce your legs if you would like to. This um, encourages energy to flow around that lower area. And with regard to the legs, I'm thinking about the ankles again, but the knees too. When you move, mobilise your um, knees and hips, you're also helping the feet as well because the blood has to go down your legs to get to your ankles. So all the joints being moved along the way are very helpful. And then just placing your hands underneath your thighs to lift up. Come to kneeling up. If that's not great for you, then um, take support under your knees or just try and find a position that's working for you. We're going to kneel up, raise the arms up, stretch your fingers, and breathing out round the back, coming into almost like a rounded cat. Chin comes to chest. Breathing in, dip the back, coming into cat and breathing out as you round your back, your chin comes to your chest, and you tuck your toes underneath, tummy or lower abdomen in, and coming into a downward dog. Lengthen the back first, and then stretch your feet. Feel free to adjust your feet to suit you. And then 
relax, knees come back down to the ground, untuck your toes, slide your hands to your knees, kneel up, carry on raising your hands upwards, looking ahead or looking up, breathing out, round your back, bend your elbows, your hands come to the ground, you're rounding, chin to chest, now dip your back as you're coming into cat. Feel that you can adjust your hands if you need to. And then round your back, chin to chest. Tuck your feet underneath, engage your lower abdomen, engage your perineum up. Come into a soft downward dog, knees bent, and then begin to straighten the legs. Really stretch back, feel the stretch in the back of the legs. And then bend the knees back down to the ground again. Untuck your toes, slide your hands towards your knees as you kneel up one last time. Stretching up, rounding your back, bending your elbows, chin comes to chest. And then breathing in, dip your back in cat, looking up or along the mat, round your back, chin to chest again, and then tuck your toes underneath, and then come into a very soft downward dog, lengthen your spine, and then begin to extend and stretch your legs behind you. You can walk the dog here by bending one knee, and then the other knee, swaying your hips from side to side, and now bend both knees, come back down to the mat, uncurl your feet, and just sway your hips gently from side to side. Rock a by baby. You're swirling the lower abdominal energy, but you're doing this very safely because your spine is supported or it's secured by kneeling at base and then of course your hands are on the mat so it's a very safe sway. Come to the centre, move your bottom to the side as we come now to rest for a few breaths. Just letting that movement that we've been making absorb into the body system before we carry on with the next movement. So you can rest in absolute shavasana, which is lying out on the ground, or you can rest with your knees bent, feet on the floor, or knees together in constructive rest. But whichever position you adopt, just let your head go from one side to the centre and then go to the other side. And then just repeat that again a couple of times, letting the head move from one side to the other. So this activates obviously the neck, but very again safely, your head is being supported by the earth. And then come back to the center. Just circle your ankles a couple of times in one direction. And then circle your ankles in the other direction. Now, as you're lying on the ground, you can just slightly keep your elbows on the ground, but just slightly raise your hands as you circle your wrists in one direction, your toes, your ankles can join in too, and then circle your wrists in the other direction. And then stretch your fingers out, you can involve your toes as well. And just feel that stretch. So if you're doing a lot of close work, this stretch of the hands is helpful just to open everything out and just relax the hands and stretch everything out. Certainly fingers, you can evolve your toes as well and then just relax. And then if you are lying on the mat, um, bend one knee and then the other so that both feet are now on the ground. Your feet are hip width apart. You can press your feet down to lift your back and bottom just to resettle it down to a comfortable position. And just gently, your hands can be palms down alongside you or uh, resting on your abdomen with your elbows out a little bit. 
Just let your knees gently sway from side to side. You can lift your hip to do that. You're massaging across your lower back in the sacral area. So I've mentioned about knees, um, um, but with a knee you look at the joint below and the joint above. So the joint below um, the knee, of course, is the ankle. We've looked at the ankle. And the joint above the knee is the hip. So you're just starting to come into the hip area. And hug your left knee into your chest. Keep your right foot where it is. And just explore holding your knee while you circle your left knee in one direction. And then circle your left knee in the other direction. Just open your left knee out to the left and just place your left ankle on top of your right um, thigh. Your hands can be resting on your abdomen or on your thighs and just gently sway both knees from side to side. You can vary um, how much you bend your knee by sliding your left ankle uh, in or out. And then supporting your left leg under your left thigh, just to lift the left ankle off, replace your left foot back on the floor. And then transfer your attention to your right side as you hug your right knee into your chest. Still holding the right knee, just circle the knee in one direction. And then circle the right knee in the other direction. So you'll feel here that the hip is moving in the hip socket. If you want a slightly different experience, you can try holding the right knee just with the right hand. Let the right knee drop out slightly further to the right. Your left hand will either stay on the floor, palms down or on your abdomen. And you then circle your right knee further out to the right and you'll find that the circle is slightly bigger and it's entirely up to you which option you prefer. You can circle the knee in the other direction there. When um, muscles get constricted and tight, just hug one knee into the chest now and then the other knee and just rock from side to side. So the, any joint particularly the hip joint, which is quite complex, it's a rotational um, joint, little muscles can contract through lack of use and that can pull on the muscles and that can affect the knee. Um, but conversely, at the ankle joint, things, again, the same thing can happen. And so if you strengthen the ankle and you strengthen the hip, then almost by default, the knee joint will, be, will be, have greater support. And then supporting your legs underneath the thighs to place one foot and then the other foot along the floor. This time, place your palms down alongside you. You can press your feet down to lift your bottom and just settle your back. Then start a pelvic tilt. So you're going to flatten your back on the floor as if you're lifting your bottom up into the air. And then just totally relax and release. So there's a little gap underneath your um, lower back. You're rolling the other way. And then again, repeat your pelvic tilt. And again, this is a very um, easy and safe way to activate the lower abdominal energy all the way around the lower back. It's quite complex with lots of muscles and nerves there. Um, the lower back around the lumbar lower L4, L5 area, so there's a big, big vertebrae towards just above the sacral area, is where all the work happens when you bend, if you're bending over or working. And that's where often a lot of strain can um, take place at the lower back area. It's where all the work happens, particularly if the tummy or abdominal muscles are weak for whatever reason. That then the back takes all the strain and that's where um, you can have problems. So this is a very safe way to start back mobilising the back. And an osteopath I know will start people on this pelvic tilt movement 
if they've had back injuries. It will be the very first movement that they might make. And they will do this up to 25 times at each session of about up to three times a day. The movement can be controlled entirely by you, by how much you rock and roll. But then this time we're now going to take it a step further. So press your feet into the ground, physically lift your bottom, engage your perineum, the lower uh, abdomen comes in, raise your arms, you can be bent at the elbows, your chin tucks in, raise your arms up behind you, stretch it behind you. Make sure your knees aren't splaying out, that they're straight ahead of you. And then start to breathe out, and then you'll find that your arms and will lower down your body, your back will lower down much more easily without any effort on your part. And again, when you're ready to press down with your feet, lifting your bottom, engaging your lower abdomen, engaging your perineum, you're engaging your bandas, your energy centers, your chin tucks in. So all three major bandas, they're called, are engaged. And this almost like rejuvenates and powers up your body. And then start breathing out, really for quite some way, and then you'll find that your arms automatically lower without any effort on your part. It becomes a much more natural or organic movement when you involve the movement entirely to your breath pattern. And then last time, pressing down with your feet, lifting up. You lift up your bottom as little or as much as you would like, it's strengthening for the back, and your back's again very supported in this movement. There are your arms, back down alongside you. And once more, come to hug your knees into your chest. And just rock from side to side. And you can explore crossing your uh, right leg over your left and holding your shins of both legs so your finest will give space at the lower back area as long as you can cross your legs and just rock slightly from side to side just enjoy the space at the lower back that this creates and then uncross your legs. You can place your hands on the ground to support that uncrossing. And then cross. You can cross your legs with your feet down or just cross in the air. Your left leg over your right. Sliding your hands down. Just hold the shins and just rock from side to side. So this really gives space right at the lower part of the spine. And then gently uncross your leg. You can do that by lowering your feet or do it in the, the mid-air, whichever works for you. And then come to relaxation. You can have your knees bent or you can have your feet along the ground. And start by wherever you are, clenching your toes and then releasing and relaxing them. And then tense your knees and then release and relax your knees. Physically tense your bottom and then untense and relax. Tense your fists, your hands and then release and relax. Tense your arms and lift your shoulders up and then release everything, lowering your shoulders and releasing your arms and relaxing them. Lift your chest away from the mat and then just relax everything back down to the ground and feel your relaxing, heavy, your body is heavy on the mat. Once more consciously raise your shoulders up towards your ears and just as consciously lower your shoulders away from your ears, creating space between the shoulders and the ears. And very gently, just gent turn your head to one side, bring your head back to the centre, and then let your head turn 
to the other side. Your chin is still propped slightly to your chest and then come back to the centre. And now place your hands on your abdomen if they're not there already. Your elbows open out to the side. And here you're creating a space, a triangle, giving a space for both lungs. And as your arms are open slightly away from your torso, this again creates space under the arms so it connects into the um, lymph system, the immune system, our energetic pathways. So just very gently notice your breath, your abdomen, your tummy expands slightly on the in-breath and it subtly, imperceptibly moves away from your hands as you breathe out. And if you want to experience that a little bit more, you can optionally slide your hands up, which opens your elbows wider to your ribs. And have a sense of breathing into your ribs sideways as your ribs open into your outstretched palms. Your rib cage moves to allow your lungs to inflate and give space for your lungs and moves away from you as the breath leaves your body. And that in and out breath focuses on the oxygen exchange so toxins get absorbed into the bloodstream at the alveoli level. Higher um, toxin release or removal as you breathe out and then fresh air and oxygen comes into your system and the blood running around the alveoli at the very end of the lungs absorbs the oxygen into the blood as we breathe in, bringing fresh blood to our brains on this very complex bodily journey of respiratory and cardio function. We're all interconnected. You can't separate the body out from the mind. It's all part and parcel of the same thing. And then just gently bring your elbows in and bring your fingertips to your collarbone and imagine that's where the, the top of the lungs are actually slightly above the collarbone. Imagine breathing right up to your fingers, filling your lungs and then just breathing out. And then just have a thought for the day, your sankalpa. Have that thought, repeat it a couple of times. It can be for yourself or it can be for anyone who's close to you. And now choose any colour that you resonate with today and imagine wrapping yourself like a bubble in that colour, inside and out. And that bubble offers you protection for the day ahead. Only positive thoughts can come in, nothing negative. It allows negative thoughts to leave, but nothing you're protected for the rest of the day in your bubble, in your preferred colour for today. And you can either stay here relaxing on the ground and enjoy just drifting and relaxing and remembering that relaxing like this opens the creative channels, it clears the mind for new thoughts to come in. Or if you want to finish the class and come back to where we are on the mat, then have an awareness of the parts of your body that are being supported by the mat, by the earth. And then very gently move your fingers and toes. Maybe move your head from side to side. Take your time, no sudden movements. You might like to hug one knee and then the other knee into the chest once more. And then just very gently move from side to side again. And a gentle seated position from here would be to roll away from your heart to the right, if that's available to you. If not, don't worry. And stay here for a moment. Just let your blood settle. And then just press in, if you've gone to the right, press your left hand down and really be subtle and gentle as you come up. 
the blood is having to refind its level and get up to your head and readjust. So it's much more gentle on the body to come up slowly, to reorientate the body to pumping the blood upwards to your head. So every movement that you make should be subtle. So let your body adjust and regulate its fluid levels. And if you are sitting up, just bring your hands to your heart and make a bow for yourself. Or stay where you are. And I'm just going to wish you all a very lovely day ahead. And thank you very much for joining me.